Hi, I'm Peter Brusso for 101 Small Business Mastermind. And boy, we got a, a good group with us today. Say good uh, afternoon, Dick. Good afternoon, Dick. And say good afternoon, Frank. Good afternoon, Frank. And we got Mark Giardino, who was with us uh, way in the earlier days. Say good afternoon, Mark. There you go. Good afternoon, guys. And we have Robert. He's our guest. And we're going to take a look Hello, at Robert. Everybody. Fabulous. Uh, we're all excited about your website. So it's it's all going to, it should be a really fun podcast. But before we get to that, uh, it is our 100th podcast. That's not a lot for big podcasters, but I think it's a lot for, it's our 100th podcast. And, and uh, so for us that started this thing, uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, we, we do it because we love small business and entrepreneurial hood. Um, and Mark was with us in the very beginning as well, too. So um, say something, Frank, about the 100th podcast. Yes, excited. Little did we know when uh, when I think you and Dick had had this idea together, and you, you invited me to join, and and, uh, and I didn't know what a podcast was, uh, and uh, I said, "Oh, good, and we'll do it a couple of times. We'll get bored, and then we'll stop doing it." And here we are, a hundred podcasts later, and we're still doing it. And uh, I have learned a lot, and it has cost cost me. It has caused me uh, to learn even more, and uh, and I want to thank you guys for inviting me to participate. I have I have gained tremendously by being a member of this podcast. Yeah, well, we, we get a great benefit from your why they make millions and you don't. Now, that hopefully isn't going to be you. You will. <laughs> but the rest of us don't at the moment. That's good. Dick, how about you? 100, well, 100 podcast. Yeah, 100 podcasts later. And, uh, you know, it's, I started out when I was in California. Now I'm in Connecticut. And, uh, like Frank says, it's been a, a a big learning experience for me, and I, I and I frankly have seen, uh, you know, everybody like uh, uh, that's been on it grow. I mean, you know, I think you know, Peter, what you've done is is uh, I'm always impressed with it. And, and Frank, I think I told you last week with what your new video capabilities and what you're doing was really impressive, and I think it's uh, you know uh, it's it's a great tool for I think people to watch. So. You know, we, we we often wonder if we're just talking to ourselves, but we do get viewers that watch this, and uh, it's been great, and I look forward to doing it some more. Great. And, Mark, how about yourself? It's been several years since you've been on, but talk yeah. about it in the beginning. Well, again, I want to thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's been nice to uh, think back of when we started and where I was back then and where I am today. Uh, this this group uh, is a great benefit to me, and I still apply all those things that we used to talk about. Uh, those are the basics, and I use them every day on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, you mentioned on the phone the other day that we were absolutely right about Facebook and some of the other things we always talked about, you know, and then here we are several years later seeing the fruits of our conversation, so to speak, you know? Yeah. But there things, you go. Things to look out. Uh, we kind of saw the future a little bit back then. And a lot of people want to build their, their business on somebody else's platform. And that's absolutely the wrong answer, you know. And it's very true to see, well, what YouTube has done with, uh, you know, revamping how they do monetary stuff and what's going on with Facebook. Everybody runs for the free stuff. But, in fact, you have to invest in, you know, your own property. And I think, well, Robert's got a great property we're going to look at here in a minute. So, Robert, let's hear a little bit about you. Okay, so uh, I spent my career in the corporate world. And about 10 years ago now, a uh, company I was working for uh, was merging with another company and relocating uh, people, you know, closing up the plant in Connecticut. And I had three kids in high school at the time and thinking about, well, what do I want to do next? And uh, decided we didn't want to relocate and uh, move while the kids were in high school. So it was a very interesting tale. Uh, my management chain was all German. When I told them that I wasn't going to, uh, to stay, they asked me to stay on for three years. And I looked at them like they were insane. I said, oh, excuse me, I'm an American. I'm thinking two weeks, and you're asking for three years? Mm -hmm. So uh, I basically decided uh, I'd uh, give them a year and a half, and that got me to my 20-year anniversary, which gave me a slightly better severance package. And it gave me time to explore different options that I might want to consider. And 
Uh, I've evaluated a whole bunch of different options. Uh, I even went to, uh, took some courses in New York City at the new school because I was considering doing even a, a restaurant uh, chain and um, finally decided to go into consulting on my own. But um, one of the things that I talked about at that time was creating the new website which we have out there now called Ulti Career. And I finally, after doing consulting for close to 10 years, decided uh, I went into consulting because that was basically my skill set where I knew I could make money. But it's, it's the classic case, like every so many years, you have to reinvent yourself. And I really wanted to do something different. So I finally decided, uh, let's not uh, regret not having tried it. So I decided to hire some uh, part-time developers to start developing the Ulti Career website. And what Ulti Career is, it was originally started off as a way of kind of giving back to the community, where it is a community database where people from all walks of life go on and describe what a day in the life of their type of job is really like. Then that it becomes a resource for students and basically anyone considering a career change to go on and explore what various careers are like to help, uh, as I like to say, to answer the age old question, what do you want to be when you grow up? And um, so that was the genesis of the site. And it's basically a four phase approach where phase zero was creating the minimum viable product, which is what we have available now. And phase one is where we're starting to promote the site to get content added into it. And we are learning as we go along. We, we originally started off with it all being text-based and we're finding that people love the idea of sharing stories. And so we've, uh, added a career talks page now where we are starting to uh, capture video recordings of people and uh, Dick was uh, one of our original guinea pigs to for <laughs> one of our initial uh, recordings for the career talks and we're going to be learning more about how we can better uh, provide uh, quality uh, videos there and continue adding to the, the content and uh, usability of our website. No, excellent. Um, let me uh, share. Let me just jump in for one second. Um, uh, you know, as we talked last week, I moved back in June from uh, California to uh, Connecticut, Guilford, and I'm, I'm a native of Brantford, Connecticut, and spent the first 47 years of my life in Connecticut, moved to California to come back. You know, I have my legal shield business, and the, the very first uh, meetup thing I go to is, uh, is a rainy, cold June night on this little boat that's doing a cruise of the Leeds Island in, uh, in, uh, in Brantford, which is a very, it's very scenic, beautiful. And uh, there's maybe eight or nine people that were brave enough to go. And then Robert and I got talking and we hit it off. And since then, we've met four or five times. And you know, we talked about Alti Career and how do we grow our business, and we're going to be starting our own, our own meetup group together uh, in September. And just so you know, Robert, uh, uh, Mackenzie uh, was at the Net90 this morning and did a nice job, and I think she got a fair amount of interest for people to, 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 to do the videos and also she did a good job representing you there. So, But that's how Robert and I first met, and last week I mentioned what Robert and what he's doing and all, and, and Frank and Peter said, geez, let's get them on. It sounds like very interesting. So that's where we are today. Yeah, and I asked uh, Frank. Uh, Frank and I uh, viewed your website and talked a bit uh, yesterday, Frank, right? Wasn't it yesterday or the day before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the day before uh, yesterday we, we talked I'm about always, it. I'm always worried how we're going to make you a millionaire, uh, Robert. And so I, I said, Frank, we have to figure it out, you know, what the – what the revenue streams can be on this site, so he will have some some stuff on that. Let me let me show the site uh, briefly here, uh, so everybody can enjoy that. Everybody should have my screen at the moment, and uh, this is yep. your home screen um, and um, the very nice video. Let me let me launch this video here. This is Dave. Dave is a 16-year-old high school junior. He likes sports, his favorite subject at school is English, and he thinks he might be interested in marketing, but doesn't fully understand what a marketing job would entail. He isn't sure whether he should go to college. This is Samantha. Samantha has just retired from her job as a saleswoman. Samantha is getting bored of retirement and thinks she might want to re-enter the workforce, but has some very specific criteria for a job she'd like to work. She wants to work outside, she wants to interact with people in a customer service environment every day, and she wants a flexible work schedule. This is Marcus. 
Marcus is a first-year computer science major at his local private university. He knows that he wants to write code for a living, but isn't sure what industry or environment he wants to work in. He doesn't know whether he wants to work for a tech giant or a small startup. He isn't sure what aspects of computer science he should specialize in. What do Dave, Samantha, and Marcus have in common? They aren't sure what it is they want to do with their talents. They know generally what they want to do with their time, but they really want to decide on what job to pursue based on what they'd actually be doing at this job every day. That's where UltiCareer comes in. On UltiCareer, contributors add posts about their careers that center around descriptions of what a typical day at their job is like. Users, such as Dave, Samantha, and Marcus, can search these posts to find information on possible career paths they'd like to go down, including things such as education and experience requirements. On UltiCareer, Dave will find descriptions of sports marketing jobs and will learn that a college degree is necessary to pursue a job in this field. Samantha will find a wealth of landscaping jobs, but after finding her search to meet her criteria of flexible hours and no heavy physical labor, she'll find that she'll be right at home at a plant nursery. Marcus will realize that he's more interested in working for a small startup and that he should specialize in artificial intelligence development. UltiCareer, the ultimate career resource, is a massive database of information about what a typical day at a given job is actually like. It isn't a job placement site like Monster or Indeed. It's a resource for those of us who aren't sure what we want to do with our lives. UltiCareer is a compilation of posts written by workers about their own jobs and is an entirely user-generated experience, which is why we're constantly looking for contributors. If you've got a job, you're qualified to post about it here, and doing so will enter you into a drawing to win a $100 Amazon gift card. UltiCareer, the ultimate career resource, the internet's number one resource for information about what a day in the life at a given job is like. Well, there you go, huh? Mm. And um, love it. Just absolutely love that. Get out of that. Um, so, Robert, how did you really come on to this thing? I mean, how did you see that people didn't know what they were going to do and you could help them do that? Oh, I mean, I'm, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Is I always I'll joke around people. And except I, I now have an answer. It's retired. But anyway, uh, I'm also a father <laughs> with, with three kids. And uh, you see all of them struggling with trying to uh, pursue what options are available out there for them and trying to decide what they want to pursue. Like my oldest, my son, has started off pursuing uh, architecture. So he started taking architecture classes and he wasn't too thrilled with them. And then he happened as an elective, took a course in um, the, uh, I think it was emergency first aid and he loved it. And he switched uh, everything around to be basically um, a major in wilderness rescue. I, I forget exactly what his actual major is. Wilderness res rescue is what he would like to do. And now he's an advanced EMT. And um, so uh, just uh, I know from my own experience, my children's experience in talking to people in life that um, it's a common problem that it, um, most people really only have a limited exposure based on what their parents have done. And if they're anything like my parents, you never really got much sense of what my dad actually did on a day-to-day -day basis. I had a general idea of what type of work he did, and that was it. And uh, I thought, is, here's a great gap that we can use the Internet to help people uh, solve. I, I have my own story with that. Uh, when I was in fourth or fifth grade, I, used, I just they came out with these booklets for science stuff, and I consumed those things. But no one ever told my parents I was interested in being a scientist or, or so, and um, never happened for me. And I, and I think that there are parents that are seeing the talents of their children, um, and they don't know how to help them, which I think your site will do. And even when I got into engineering school, I, I didn't know what an engineer did. I mean, it's kind of stupid. Why did I go do that? You know, but I don't even know what they do. You know, well, turns out it all was fine, but I didn't know an engineer. And, um, and, and I think that's another piece of the puzzle to your site. You, you get a chance to see these videos of career professionals in those careers. So you actually get a chance to experience it. Yep, that's the whole intent. And, and eventually, awesome. we'll, I mean, we've got tons of ideas of future enhancements. And one of our future enhancements that we have in mind is to actually add a, some networking capabilities where people can invite people they know to uh, register to the site and just describe uh, what fields of uh, the different careers they have familiarity with and be able to 
do like node networking to show people like they a whole thing of what is six degrees of separation yep. uh, how they may know somebody who uh, could give them information about what they're looking for and then we're eventually going to also add some mentoring capabilities where people could use it as a brokerage service to introduce them to someone who works in a given field to uh, they could chat with and get mentoring about what that job is really like and advice on how to pursue that the job for success. And, and I think it's not only just for kids. Here's a classic example. There's Dick, right? Dick got bored with retirement. You want to talk about that, Dick? Yeah, that's, that's a great point, Peter. Uh, you know, I, I've said uh, a lot lately uh, that retirement's overrated, and maybe one of my biggest mistakes ever was retiring. And after being retired for four or five years and really getting totally stagnant, I decided I want to do something and I want to do a home-based business world. And, and I, you know, so I, I could have used something like this to just to, you know, to get into the, into that networking world that Rob was just talking about to see what, what works, what doesn't work and the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I, it's not just, uh, uh, I don't think it's just for, for kids. It's for anybody that's looking to do a, a job change. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm going to throw, I'm not throwing Mark under the bus here, but Mark, you remember you went and interviewed, how do you get a website done? Remember that whole story? And the guy told you and then you went and did it. Can you talk about that? You know what? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, what I, what can I do you go remember, back. Can you go back now again? This is five years ago, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. What what was the scenario? Well, basically what you told me, mm -hmm. and I can believe it to be true, is that you wanted to have well in your case you have a sports website, a user website, and you didn't you didn't know how to do that and you didn't know about keywords and you didn't know about mm -hmm. a lot of the things that Google tracks. So uh, to your credit, you went and asked somebody and had an interview with them well, and they they kind of hammered you. That's right. Uh, now it's coming yeah. back to me. I, yeah. I called a developer and I said, um, I made an appointment with him and I went, went and had the appointment and I, I explained to him what I wanted to do and he was uh, pretty upfront on what I needed to do and who my competition was and it was a very eye-awakening uh, meeting when when I had the idea of doing the sports uh, website. And then you went away, it took you one year, and you, you created that site, you even went back to them as I recall. Well, that's that's exactly right. Well, then I had to raise the funds, so then it took me about a year to, to raise the funds to do the kind of the site I wanted to do, and then I went back to them, uh, we, we started a, a template of the site, but then eventually then, then I started it doing it myself. So that's kind of the original how it started. I now, did, uh, now and Robert, I would chase chase him down too. I remember I would literally like pull his arm. I can believe that. Now, now Robert, uh, so you went out and and uh, you had uh, an idea for this site, and what did you do from that point? Um. I played around a little bit myself and realized I didn't have the time for it. I actually uh, talked to some former colleagues of mine and uh, they helped you know, working with them, kind of put together some initial specifications and then, but um, they didn't have time to really pursue it either. So I finally decided to just bootstrap it and I advertised for some local developers who would be willing to work part-time on it. And I hired two uh, part-time developers to start building the site. And um, I've been bootstrapping it ever since. And now it's getting to the point where I'm looking to uh, how we start turning the, the corner and start looking at ways to monetize the site. So it can it at minimum pay for itself? And at, at uh, best, um, let's go for what you said before, make myself a multimillionaire. Yeah, that's, that, and we won't stop at the millions. Let's go to the billions. I mean, let's not think <laughs> small here, you know. Let's not be accused of thinking small. Yeah. Frank, what do, you, what do you think of the site? Um. I I I liked I, first of all I, I liked the video. What 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 did you what software did you use to create that video? You know, uh, that's actually one of my developers created that video. I don't know which software he okay. used. For it. it was it was cute, it was catchy, it was quick. Uh, I liked the movements. I liked the short attention span that I could use because I have ADHD, and you kept me there. 
because I didn't know what's going to happen next. I, I couldn't afford to let my mind wander because Martha was going to show up or Marcus was going to show up and I had to pay attention. So well done. Very well. Congratulations. I love the idea of the site. I think it is. I 40 years ago, 40 years ago this year, uh, I changed careers. I went from uh, uh, systems manager, systems analyst from a movie company in Boston, and I took my first sales job. Okay, and uh, and I didn't know what I was getting into, and I wish I knew what I was getting into. It turns out it worked out well, but I did it because uh, they offered me one thing I wasn't getting, money. And then I I didn't have to worry about getting a raise. I could make more sales and make more money. I said, damn, that's pretty damn good. Okay, but as it turns out, I hate sales, so that that didn't work out too well. But even though I made money at it, uh, but I love the idea. Love the idea. I think it is so necessary, especially as we get more and more jobs available. People are going to have options. Before you took a job because you needed to make money. Now you may take a job because you'd like to really do what you want to do as opposed to just making money, that kind of thing. Uh, so I think um, I'm, 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 I'm excited about what you're doing, and I think there's a need for it, a big need for it, especially as, you, as the economy grows and as the economy lessens. The need will always be there. Yep. The That's the way I look at it in both up times and down turns. And, uh, people are going to be wondering, oh, what's out there? What can I leverage my existing skills for or, what's, or what is of interest to me? There's always going to be a need to explore and see what options are out there that people may want to pursue in both good Absolutely. and bad times. Absolutely. And then on the other hand, and I, always, I always give both sides of the story. On the, other hand, on, the other. on the other hand, uh, I, think, uh, I think you're missing a piece. And, um, and uh, let me tell you where that, where that piece is. And it can be added in phase three. I mean, it's not important to have it in phase three. Right now, what you're doing is awesome. Right? But I think when, 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 if, if you're interested, when you're ready, there's, there's one piece that there's, and I'll go, it's a, it's a talk I gave the other day. Most people look at two things. Um, what am I good at? Or what can, what can I be good at? And what will I get paid for? Okay, for example, I could be good at, uh, at playing bridge, but no one's ever going to pay me, all right? So people will pay me if I could create uh, an artificial intelligence self-driving car. Well, I'm not good at that, okay? So it's going to be a combination, you see my Venn diagram here, uh, mm -hmm. where my skill set matches what people will pay, and I say, damn, that's pretty good. It's, it looks like you've been reading my ebook. Oh, I, have, I haven't, well, no, but I haven't, but this, this came from um, a guy named Sir Ken Robinson, one of the more popular YouTube, anyway, he does about education. But then I added, a, I added a third Venn diagram, a third circle. What are you good at? What do people pay you for? And that's what most, this is what 99% of people do. And then the third one is, what do you enjoy doing? And that's the piece that I missed when I took a sales job. I was good at it, made a lot of money, got a lot of promotions. I made a lot, made money, a lot of promotions, and people would always pay me to, to sell. But I hated it. I really didn't like it until I added the third thing, and I do that a lot with people that I work with right now. I take all three because if you if you really enjoy what you're doing, you never have a job because you you would do it anyway. But to actually actually have people pay you for it, and I think that'd be a, a wonderful thing that you could add. People our age, I'm looking at me and Dick right now because I know Dick and I are the oldest. Uh, people at our age, you know what? We've already made some money and we've already done the damn job thing. We're retired. But here's what I'm obsessed with. And I could be pretty good at it. And if somebody could pay me for it, wow. I wish I had that 40 years ago. I wish I had that when I was in college. Anyway, so that was good. But other than that, I think what you're working is tremendous. And I think there's a need for it. Big need for it. Just the way it is. Is a big need for it. So I wanted to add that for you. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, and I'm just curious uh, when you bring that up is um, uh, talk about what you enjoy doing. So basically that would we would feed that into the site in terms of uh, like the, uh, the questionnaires so that will have people uh, fill in to, so they can explore jobs that touch on the things that they enjoy doing. You're passionate at. You know, I think right. you well, again, Ken Robinson, the gentleman from England who now lives here in California, um, he calls it your calling. I'll give you an example. There was a, there was a, a young a kid, a kid. He was in, uh, I don't know, eight, 10 years old, named Bart. 
and Bart um, was terrible at school. And it teaches, teach now will tell the parents, you know, Bart's really a sweet kid, but he's never going to amount, amount to much. And Bart hated school and so forth. But Bart was very good at walking up and down stairs on his hands and walking forwards and backwards on his hands. So you know, it, was, it was a novelty for parties. Hey, Bart, do your hand thing, and they would clap and so forth. And so finally his mother said, uh, I'm going to send him to a, to a gym, to a gymnastics class. He went, and the kid was in his heaven. The kid loved gymnastics but hated school. And his name was Bart Connor. And he wound mm. up being a gold medalist and married yeah. Nadia Comedies and so forth. Um, Bart's calling was doing what he did. Now he teaches kids and that type of thing. Uh, and I use that as, as an example of, uh, of everybody, every, everybody. And I, I, said, I had a meeting this morning. And I told everybody, everybody has their calling. Whether you use it or not is up to you. But everybody has something that they were put on so that they are just naturally good at. Mine was not sales. I, had, I forced myself to be good at sales because I didn't like it. But I have other things like I'm, what I'm doing right now. I, I, I can't sleep at night because I'm so excited about what I'm doing. So everybody has that natural talent. Maybe it, it'll work for you to, to make money. Maybe it won't, but at least you'll know what it is. And so I think that'd be a, no one, no one is doing that in, a, in marketplace as far as I know. So that'd be something you may want to think about adding at a later date. Yeah. It's just one of the things I've yeah. started doing is uh, as part of our approach to promote the, uh, the site, I'm uh, developing a book called uh, basically Ultimate Career Insights, Your Career Guide for Troubled Times. And one of the, uh, the uh, pieces that I uh, put in there is basically a Venn diagram where it talks about we, uh, what are your interests versus so uh, we, we and basically skills and what uh, skills companies are hiring for because a lot of people have interest like the, the example i give in the book is that they, i may be interested in uh walking on the beach but no one's going to pay me for walking on the beach but if i can use that interest to develop it into a skill and say maybe my skill is looking at uh the uh tidal flows or the the, the tidal ecosystem yeah, marine well, now biology or something. i'm turning yeah. my skill which is sounds like a superficial skill that i like walking on the beach into a marketable or i should say my interest into a marketable skill and then uh and how you can look at basically your perspective on how you view what your skills are to see how you can position those for a wider variety of different careers. Right on. Like it. Right on. Like okay, it. I, 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 we, we could go on, but I, I've got a time limit and I, want, I don't want to control everything here. So but, all right. uh, I'm uh, happy to hear all input because I want to make this a success. A success. It will. Yes, very good. Well, I really like, let's, let me share my screen. I'll show you what I, I think is also extremely cool about the site. Um, uh, let me see the career talks. Now this, this is new and hey, look, look at who we got there. <laughs> There's Dick, you know, and uh, we can listen to Dick here for a second. Okay, my name is uh, Richard Bentley, and I am an independent associate with Legal Shield. Legal Shield offers uh, basically uh, legal insurance. It's, it's uh, prepaid legal services where you can get the advice and counsel of an attorney, you know, for, uh, for as many issues as you as you need. And uh, they, it basically costs less than a dollar a day for a family. They, they offer for small businesses. They also offer for. Uh, employers to offer their employees as a benefit with the cost of them. So it's basically legal insurance. And, and the reason it, it's, it's really helpful for the, for the little type of person that can't afford to pay a, a, an attorney three, four dollars an hour. So if it's for a family of six, it's twenty four ninety five a month with no long term contract. But it's a home based business. And uh, what, what you know, my day consists of maybe three or four different uh, types of activities. One, uh, I do some self improvement. They have a lot of training and 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 those and all. And I read read some. I try to I try to talk to at least three or four people a day about legal shit because you know it, it it's they say you should have you know at least three or four exposures a day because. Um, All right, you get the idea. I don't want to bore everybody with that one, but uh, the um, Dick. One of the things that is is very apropos 
is the fact that you got tired in retirement. So, yeah. you know, part of the whole thing again is I, I don't think uh, uh, one one section of revenue stream will be people like Dick. You know, that is retired. Uh, Dick, you want to talk about getting bored, smoking cigars, and playing golf? Yeah. Well, that's 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 what I uh, my life became. Is uh, you know, I play golf a couple times a week and read books and smoke cigars. And uh, I, I I I like golf, but I didn't love it. I didn't not enough to go out and and uh, practice every day. And I get over that. And I I realized that again, like I said earlier, I I, I really felt myself getting stagnant. And I didn't didn't like the feeling at all. So, uh, you know, that I made the decision, and at the time, I was snowbirding it between Connecticut and California. So, I, whatever I did had to be home based, and uh, and that's why I came to the conclusion. And I and I, I did my own research that that led me to Legal Shield. If 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 multi career was there, I could have used that and probably you know. Had a shortcut to uh, to finding myself to a, to, to a legal shield because I, I I knew the things I didn't want to do. I didn't want to get involved with uh, the herbal lives and all these diet things and pills and things like that. Obviously, I, I couldn't do Mary Kay very well. And, you know, so I, <laughs> so, so I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, but I, I knew I knew the things I didn't want to do, and when I found. Legal Shield, I saw the things I did want to do because it, it took me back to what I considered to be a, a more professional level of, level of selling. And unlike Frank, I, I think my calling was selling. I love to sell. I love to do that. So it, it took me into the type of selling that I wanted to get into. And and uh, and, and like I say, I didn't have a resource like UltiCareer to, to fall back on. I had to do it all myself. So I think there's... There's, there's probably a very big market for people like myself out there to use use your service. I think because you 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 find a lot of people that that get 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 on in their career and like I think Frank said it you know they they're successful at it but they hate what they're doing but he did it so they needed the money and now they, you know they hit the point well I want to do something I like that I can make money at so uh, you know I think that uh, there's a uh, it's not limited to you know twenty year old college kids. It's I, I think it's anywhere on the spectrum of uh, of uh, of employment, and and I think maybe even more so in downtimes, people are either looking for jobs, they're worried about their jobs, they're, they're going to be doing more searching to find something to do than uh, than right now because there's there's more jobs than people are filling. So. You know, well, Frank, you know, you, you got that meetup group, the Misfits and Entrepreneurs. This is right down that alley, is it not? Yeah, it is. I, I gave a uh, talk this morning, Robert. I, I created a little group. There's like five or six of us that show up on a regular basis. And uh, I, uh, again, we talked about I, I, I participate in this thing that Peter does and that Dick and Peter invited me to participate. And I wound up doing a, a talk almost every broadcast about a person who uh, is called Why They Make Millions and You Don't, who ordinary people, not the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates, but ordinary people, um, like a Naomi Dunford, I'll use her, I always use her as an example. Naomi Dunford uh, was a, a young lady who at 17 got pregnant in high school and quit high school. She never went back. Uh, two years later, she's now 19, 20 years old, and she's pregnant again, and she's living in a homeless shelter. And she decides that uh, she's not be able to give her two, the one she has and the kid on the way a good life. So she becomes a business consultant living in a homeless shelter. And she makes over $200,000 a year. Now she no longer lives in a homeless shelter. But hmm. there was a kid who decided that she was, she was obsessed with helping small business. And she knew that because – and I, I put that in my story as to why, how she knew that. And now she makes a living making $200,000 a year. You know, starting with a, without a, without going to college and without, a, she may have a GED by now. I don't know that, but uh, she's in the mid thirties right now. Um, so anyway, so I've done 95 of those stories, 95 different people. And I brought, I had pictures of the 18 that I've done recently in my, my group this morning. And I says, and I went through the things that they have in common. And, and I won't go through, bore you guys with what it is, but you know, I'll have a video on it probably. Um, 
But each one, each one found out what they were obsessed with and monetized it to the point that they're each now making millions of dollars. And Naomi's case will be over the lifetime of her company that she started called Itty Bitty Biz. But um, I'm doing one next week, uh, a lady in her mid thirties who, um, who decided to change careers after she went in uh, junior year in college. Uh, and now she's worth, and she started a company, I guess, in 2007, it's been 11 years. She's now worth $334 million. Doing passion. What she with, doing it's, passion, obsession. I call, passion. I call it a, a healthy obsession, a good OCD. <laughs> and she, mm. she does it. She doesn't mind doing it seven days a week because she loves doing it. Matter of fact, she couldn't stop doing it. Her, mind wouldn't, her brain wouldn't let her stop doing it because she loves it so much. If you can find that, become good at it, and people will pay you, to me, that's the holy trinity. Done deal. Yep. Mm. Anyway, and I wanted my thank you gave me. I wanted my soapbox. I'll, I'll back off of that. But Robert, awesome stuff you're doing. Passion, awesome. passion, awesome. defenders. Mm. You know, that's my passion. Bingo. There's mm. another yeah. case. You know, right, right, right there. there, right there. And we save lots of lives and and protect a lot of people with a simple piece of plastic. But that's a passion. And I put out 25 new products over the last month. 30 videos. I mean, I'm driven. It's like I'm insane. I gotta, I, I gotta do these videos. I gotta get more of this stuff out there. So you know, I I can't weigh in hard enough that we ought to we ought to look. The part of the site ought to be to f help them with their passion and monetize it, just like Frank said. Well, I've I've created a few exercises of how you can identify your obsession. Okay, now whether you want to follow it, that's again, that's always a choice people have. Uh, but again, uh, I, I don't want to get into it, but, anyway, but there's, there's, there's ways of getting close to finding out what your calling is, what your passion is, what you're obsessed with that will allow you to get paid. Because if you don't get paid, then it's called a hobby. You better have another job then, because hobbies don't pay bills. Jobs, money pays bills. Anyway, so that's <sighs> off my soapbox. Hobbies are money sink. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Yeah, Mark had a passion. Yeah. He made it happen. And he still does. He still so, does. That's it, right. It, isn't that kind of sort of your, yeah. your, your, your thing? I mean, you had a passion to do something, and you didn't have the skills to do it, but you went and got the skills to do it, which is the same thing we're talking about, Robert, about if you can identify their passion, you can always get the skills and the training to go down that passion. The, the, the reverse isn't necessarily true. Yeah, okay, I got some skills, and I'm going to code for a while. Big deal. You know, it, but it I, I don't doesn't keep me up at night, you know, uh, being excited. So I think that that has to come out. Let me show one other thing while we're while we're on the on here. Um, one thing I really like about this, the career talks, you know, here's a person I haven't watched this one yet, uh, but you have a, a marketing person. Of course, you have Dick as an entrepreneur. Um, you have a consultant. Um, an artist, even. I mean, th these are almost bookends, and a, and a Presbyterian minister of all things, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are like bookends. And of course, the more you're going to get in here, the better off. But uh, uh, I love this whole idea because if they get on the site and they see a same, another person that's passionate with the same thing that they like to do, wow, there's a mentor. There, there's a whole, there's a, there's a bunch of uh, good stuff in that, you know. Uh, I think I love it. I, I don't see this in any other site, you know? Yeah. Um, so as we're uh, talking about passion and whatnot, one of the things that I find is interesting is when I talk to people about you know, this site, it's almost universal that people say, this is a fantastic idea. I wish that I had this when I was younger. And one of the biggest challenges we're facing right now is how to get people to translate it from saying this is a great site to taking the 10, 20 minutes or so it would take to uh, contribute content to the site. Any just, thoughts from uh, your yeah, panelists? Yeah, I think you what, appeal to their them? passion. I, I want to get on there, and I can talk about all kinds of different stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm not limited um, to one thing in my life, for sure, you know, but I, there's engineering, there's entrepreneurialhood. Um, what Frank has landed on and doing is just phenomenal. I, I just can't wait to see his product come out. And here's, you know, here's Dick. Uh, he's already on the site. Um, but, you know, Dick was the number three guy in a billion-dollar company. Well, where do you find talent like that? You know, here's Mark. He had a passion. 
You know, he's making stuff happen. He ain't sitting around. Uh, now, do I always hit a home run? No, but you got to try. And the passion is the fuel. So I think if you can translate them talking on the site and adding that content, um, did you actually ask them if they would do it? Did anybody turn you down? We usually get, uh, oh, yeah, uh, let's schedule something, and then you might try to follow up. It's like uh, the, like I had one who's a great guy who's a local state legislator, and he's agreed to do it three times. And each time when I try to pin him down to a date and time to do it, it's like something's coming up, and, and uh, he can't be bothered. Uh, well, he has to postpone it. well, in this case, you got two of us here. You should, you should say, hey. Uh, what? Where's your calendar? Let's get scheduled right now. Let's do this, you know. And 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 with Zoom, we could really chunk that that site up nicely. You know, there's That's, no other stuff that, that we was have. My, my lead into the next thing I was going to ask. If, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all for it. I don't know, Frank. You you willing to get on this site? Oh, I didn't know I was the other one. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh and. I can keep on looking at my corner because I, cause I got the time limit. Um, yeah, we've got 15 there, was, there, there was a lady and a husband, and um, I keep on going back to the story. I have not talked about this lady yet. Pardon her and her husband um, were good teachers. They were good teachers. And this was before the tech world became the tech world. They were, technology was just beginning up there in Northern California. So and her husband, her and her husband, and this is before the internet, before 93, I think. Her and her husband started... Um, teaching classes at nights and weekends, technology to startups, and they, and they, they, they had a bunch of people sign up. And then they started doing online, and, and, and they did well. And, um, and they, people asked for more and more courses, and they decided to sell courses online. Well, they're in a husband can only do so much. So they went out and asked for contributors, okay? Like, you're looking for contributors. And what she says, hey, I'm not going to, I can't pay you, but... I'm going to charge for my site, and if anybody takes your course, I'll give you a piece of my action. And there are people now who make a living on this site. It's called lynda.com, and who just bought out by LinkedIn, I think, for a billion dollars. Yep. So Linda and her husband did extremely well. But they were in the same position you're in. They offered value. And they, by the way, Linda charges, tw I don't know if Peter, you joined. Linda charges 25 to $35 a month unlimited courses. Yeah, twenty nine ninety five basically. Okay. LinkedIn, yeah. And again, because I'm going to rush a little bit because I, I got this, the deadline. Robert, excuse me for pointing. I don't mean to point this way. That, that's, un, that's rude. Um, I'm excited, though. Uh, there are two people who are going to need your course, need your course, need your site, in my opinion. People who are looking for a job or people who want to – looking for a job or, in my case, they want to start a company, okay? Uh, and then people, once they get a job – want to learn how to get a career advancement and in, improve their job. There's two, you have two legs. We'll have a bunch of stuff that will help you identify what your ideal job is. And once you get that ideal job, I'll have a whole bunch of other things that will teach you career advancement, leadership skills, how to deal with difficult people, how to negotiate a salary, how to do, negotiate benefits, how to do this, how to, how to spend. You could offer 52 different courses. And... You may want to, and you talk about monetizing, you may want to consider the Linda model. Charge X dollars a month. Yep. Unlimited courses. Okay, come on, you know, you, you, you think you got enough, take off. You want to come back, you'll, you'll pay the then current price. If you, if you never drop out, you'll always pay the price you signed up for, which could have been $10, $15. A month. If you had $4,000, 4,000 people paying you $25 a month, it's 1.2 million a year of income. That ain't bad, Robert. I can live on that. That ain't, and that's only that. That that's that first phase. Then, then you want to jump that up. Then and I think my consulting fee just went up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, Robert, and I'm, I'm excuse me, and guys, thank you for because I know I got to get off pretty soon. Things to consider, if you will, you know, having different legs depending on where they are in their career. I'm going to do the same thing with my why they make billions and and you don't. I'm going to have a whole leg for how to start a business. And then I'm going to have a whole new legs that now you started how to grow your business and how to do company, that type of thing. Uh, okay. And uh, you're, you're in the same business, how to start a career or find a career or change a career. And once you're in that, here's what you got to do to improve it and get advancement and make more money and get more promotion, that kind of thing. And there's a whole bunch of stuff on that, a whole bunch of stuff that people could access only on Ulti Career. 
which happens for both before you get a job and after you're in your in your job. This is great. I really like that, that insight. And 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 if if we are going down that line as an entrepreneur, um, I can teach them how to do business plans, which nobody likes to do. They are boring, uh, but they're absolutely critical for your success as a business plan because it makes you real. I once spent. Go ahead. Frank. I'm, so, I'm sorry. You just hit something huge. A business cannot get funded unless they have a business plan. Correct. A career will not flourish unless you have a career plan. Absolutely. You could offer Ulta Career. The only one offers a career plan, a business plan for your career. Wow. You could have a whole series of courses on that, on videos. Yep. A whole series of courses on that. And by the way, and every time... Ah, excuse me, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> every month or every every two months, you have a whole string of five new courses on, on, on career plans. People can't afford to leave your site because I want to miss what's happening next month. And you can advertise it. Come here next month, five other ways to improve your career. They've got to wait another month, which means they're going to pay you another month. Damn, it's marketing. Yeah. Anticipation, excitement. I love, it. I love it. One of the other things, Frank, talk about the million-dollar chicken salad. Oh, Stacy Brown. Quick story. Stacy Brown was a young lady who went to Auburn University. Uh, and she met her husband there. Good Southern Alabama school, right? And what do Southern women do when they get married? They send the husband to work and they stay home and have kids. That's what Stacy did. Stacy was an awful, awesome mom. Her husband had a great career. They were doing well. That ideal family, they have three kids. And he comes home and says, you know what, honey? I'm, I don't love you anymore. I'm out of here. She goes, oh, crap. Now what do I do? She's got to support her kids. She did her little Venn diagram thing. The only thing she was good at that people may want to pay her for, she could make chicken salad. That's it. She had no business experience. So she started making chicken salad at home and going door to door selling chicken salad. Pretty cool. People love their chicken salad. That word of mouth spread. And, uh, and then she started going to schools and, and hair, hair salons and giving free samples of crisp chicken, chicken salad, and the phone rang off the hook. People, they loved their chicken salad. And then she got a phone call from the department, the Board of Health, and says, hey, Miss Brown, yeah, we understand you're selling chicken salad, you're making it on your, uh, on your, kitchen, uh, your kitchen home. She says, yeah, would you like to buy some? No, but you can no longer sell it. It's against the Board of Health. You're out of business as of right now. Her business went to hell. She went to a family friend, and he had just lost his job and so forth. And he says, I know business, you know, chicken sell. Let's open up a restaurant. They opened up a restaurant. And today, they own a chain of restaurants. She's worth over $100 million. Chicken salad. Chicken salad. Chicken salad, Robert. She was obsessed with chicken salad. So can you turn chicken salad and chicken crap into chicken salad? She did. What is your passion? What is your passion? That's the ticket. And, and and if I can leave you just one with three, is there, I, I pose these three questions to the people I, I met with this morning in my presentation. I said, if you have an idea for a business, okay, there's only three questions. There's three questions you have to answer at first. Number one, well, you have to answer this question for, for your business. What's the problem you are solving? Well, we know what that is because you're doing it. Number two, are there enough people willing to pay to solve that problem? Is it, is it a much of a pain in the, in the ass for them to solve it? And number three question, how much are they willing to pay? Once you answer those three questions, you know if you do or do not have a business worth pursuing. Boom. I'm done. And, and that's some powerful stuff that should go on your site, I would think. Oh, can I give an example? That's advice. That's fantastic. Can I give an example, Robert? Please do. Um, I think, too... What we're saying too is you got to leave yourself open to what things lead to, and I think that's the theme of this uh, group today with our hundred um, podcast. Podcast is I'm thinking back as I did some very similar in the beginning. We did a, a site called Sports Refer, and Sports Refer was to bring uh, sports enthusiasts together into uh, like uh, you know tennis uh, to to each category and they can, uh, again, network uh, through their categories and come together. So very similar to what you're doing. But when I put it together, it was difficult. Uh, the programming was difficult. And maybe Peter can um, bring it up. 
um, and then it led to sports events networks. And so what I'm trying to say is you, you never know what, uh, what you're doing now and what you're learning could also uh, lead to something else, you know, in this very similar, but, but in a monetization way. How's that for, for nice? <laughs> the, the job. Uh, All right, guys, we're coming up yeah. on the end uh, for Frank, so I don't want to lose uh, Frank walking off before we close it out. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Frank, before you leave, can yes. we uh, get your what? commitment to be interviewed for OT Career? Uh, I, I would, it. I would love to uh, spend as any time you'd like. Uh, we can do a Zoom with, you know, anybody you want, and we can talk about it. And I'd love to be interviewed. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Like, I would, I would, I would consider that an honor. Thank you. Uh, I want to contact say, details. I Robert then, and look at him today. I want to be one of those guys that says I knew him then. Yeah, so that'd be awesome. Fun stuff. Uh, Dick, you want to say uh, say anything? No, I, I think it's been a, a real interesting hour and. Uh, you know, I when I uh, spoke to Robert about being on, I I described Peter as as a genius, which he is, and uh, Frank is probably one of the best marketing guys that I've ever met, which he is. I didn't I didn't know uh, 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 Mark was going to be on, but but, uh, but I I think the discussion today has just borne out what I told you, Robert. You got two guys that really going to you know could could help you in a lot of different ways and uh, be part of be part of the thought process of growing your business so i think it was a good hour absolutely i completely agree thank you yes all right well thank you robert for coming on and thank you mark for coming on after all this time and um, I, i'm sorry I, didn't i have some headphones Peter? You did. i was going to ask you where the heck are your headphones yeah were? It, whatever mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to dig them back out dig them back mm -hmm. out and yeah. the audio is much better with headphones on, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's my pleasure to say, say good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Yeah, good say night, good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. <laughs> good night, Mark. Good night. Good night. All right, guys, hang on. All right. Good, good show. Hang on. <laughs>